everyone, it's Justine and welcome to a new tutorial today. I'm going to be making an interactive card using the new release from Ellen Hudson. I'm going to start off with some distress blending here. I'm going to create my background. I'm working on a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock and I'm going to be using three colors of Distress Oxide ink, squeezed lemonade, tattered rose, and worn lipstick. I'm going in with a circular motion as you can see and I always start off of the cardstock and work my way on. This helps me avoid harsh lines. Also keeping relatively minimal pressure on your hand helps as well if you want to get the pastel look that I'm going for here. The second color that I'm going to be using is Tattered Rose. I'm going to be going in now with the entire background and then darkening up the edges with some worn lipstick. I'm using the same technique as before, the circular motion, light hand, and then starting off the cardstock. You can create really beautiful blends with Distress Oxide inks with pretty minimal effort. It's a lot different than the Distress inks or the original ones where you used to have to really keep a light hand to avoid harsh lines. Half of the ink here is going to seep into the cardstock and some of it's going to stay on top because it's a pigment and dye ink blend. So that way you can move around the color that's on the surface before it dries. You have lots of time to do that. Now, Distress Oxide ink, of course, is ink reactive, so, or is water reactive, so I'm just spraying some water using my Distress sprayer. What's cool about the sprayer is you can give it a quick spritz to get a lot of little drops, or you can give it a slow, delayed spritz to get really large areas, and you can get a variety. So I am using the Rainbow Slider card here. It has three components to the die. This is a new die from Ellen Hudson, and it's part of the new release. So I'm going to show you exactly how to put this card together. It's super easy, and this is the second time that I'm doing it. I did it once off camera in order to become familiar with it, and I didn't even need the instructions the second time, so it really isn't difficult. You're going to take that die that had the cloud and the little shooting star die cut in it, and you're going to attach it to your panel. You want to make sure that the little lip at the top, so that half circle, is semi-hanging off of the cardstock. This is going to create a nice little window and it's going to be your pull tab later. So I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine. I'm using a Gemini electronic die cutting machine, but you can use a handheld one as well, like a big shot. And I'm sending this through my die cutting machine. And you'll notice with the electronic one that you do need to have the die upside down. So it's a little bit different than a big shot. So I'm going to remove this die. You can see I held it in place using some purple tape. That's important. You don't want it to shift when, it's, when you're die cutting. So you have your rectangle, and if that lip didn't cut out entirely, you can just add a little bit of a slit there just to help it along, and that'll fall right out. So you now have this half circle and the rectangle, and you can put away these, uh, this frame you can throw away, and then you can put away the clouds and the shooting star for later. You can choose whether or not you want to use those in the end, but there's some really great embellishments for this type of card. Now I'm going to take a piece of white cardstock, 80 pound Nina Solar White, like I used on the card panel, and I'm going to die cut the other two dies. So as any sort of scrap paper will do as long as it's long enough to fit these dies. So now they're all finished. I have this one here that's like a bookmark with a little arrow at on the top. And this is my rainbow slider. So this is kind of the interactive part of the card. So what you need to do is you need to be able to color this in any sort of rainbow idea that you might have. So I'm grabbing a piece of paper to kind of help me mask off the area. This is a scrap piece of paper obviously since I've used it for the die cutting. And I'm going to be using fairly light colors because the colors I used on the front of my panel are not exactly your typical vibrant rainbow. If you would like or are interested at all, this weekend I also have a video showing this card on the Ellen Hudson channel and I do a rainbow technique with foils so be sure to look out for that because I do do monthly videos on the Ellen Hudson channel. I will be posting about it on my blog as well so if you're a blog subscriber you'll be notified right away. Okay so I'm going in and continuing on with my stripes here or the little arcs of the rainbow and I'm coloring them in again to match the panel of my card. Here's a look at the final colors if you want to pause the screen to write those down. Okay, so now we have it put together. So we just need to fold the score lines. So there are only two score lines here. So you have one side with a rectangle and one side with that half circle. You're going to flip over your colored area and you're going to put some tape runner or adhesive onto the rectangle part. And you're going to line up the half circle with the arrow so that it's in the middle. So you can see there that the arrow is nicely in the middle of that semicircle there and 
then you're going to place some adhesive where the semicircle is but on the colored panel only. You're going to line up the semicircles and then press down on the adhesive. If you happen to cut your card panel like I did, you can trim off the bottom. It's not an issue. When you open up your card, it should create sort of a Z pattern here or a Z pattern. And that is going to indicate that you did this properly. So now I'm just going to fold my card base. Now I wouldn't have had to do any sort of trimming on my card if I had made my panel the standard four and a quarter by five and a half A2 size. But because I did cut it a little bit smaller to have that white frame, I needed to trim it. Just a tip in case you wanted to go back and do this. I'm adding some foam tape now. Now you're going to add foam tape along the areas that are not in that rainbow slider. You do not want to have anything on the slider at all. So now I'm just peeling off the 3D foam tape here. And you can even put a double layer of foam tape if you want the rainbow slider to have a lot of room to move around. But I find this to be thick enough. So I'm just going to stick this on my card. And I'm actually going to make this a horizontal landscape card, but I find it easier to line up this way. So I'm just going to make sure everything is adhered. And then you can grab the pull tab and you can see that it will pull out using the rainbow. See, this is how it works. So now that my interactive portion is all done, it's time to start stamping. Now what's really important when you're stamping here is that you placed enough foam tape on the back of your adhesive to create a nice even row. If you have very saggy cardstock at the bottom, you or you don't want to use a lot of foam tape, you might want to stamp your panel before you actually put it together. It might be a smarter idea in the long run anyway. I'm using these unicorns and rainbows and pure magic stamp set. They have some absolutely amazing sentiments on there, as well as some really cute designs that go along, I believe, with the color palette, as well as the interactive rainbow slider. I was really, really wanting to use this, your Phantasmagorical stamp, which is one of the reasons why I put the card in a landscape rather than a vertical card, because it wouldn't have fit really nicely on the vertical card. So now I'm just going to ink this up and then stamp it using my mini Misty stamping tool. So now that I have that, it's time to just finish off the embellishments for my card. You're welcome to use any of the ones from the Unicorn Magic stamp set, but I'm just going to go ahead and add some of these clouds in here. So I am adding some adhesive and you just have to make sure you're not getting any on the rainbow slider. That's really important. And then you can add your clouds here anywhere you'd like. And they're already distress inked in the colors that you need. So that's pretty fun as well. So that's the end pretty much of my card tutorial. Here is the final rainbow slider. You can see it being so interactive and fun. And I need to obviously adhere these a little bit better, maybe with some liquid adhesive. Since the um, rainbow slider is going to move them around, you probably need a stronger adhesive than what I use. So try some Tombow Mana liquid adhesive and you'll be fine. Okay, so that's the end of my card tutorial. Here's a final look at the cards. I hope you enjoyed this super fun rainbow slider card that's now available through Ellen Hudson. I have all the links and the supplies listed below in the video description as well as on my blog if you'd like to check them out. I now have a suggested video as well if you want to continue watching or if you want to subscribe to my channel, don't forget to hit the red button. Thanks, bye!